Ferdinand Marcos ruled the Philippines with an iron fist from 1966 to 1986. Critics charged Marcos and his regime with crimes like corruption and nepotism. Marcos himself is said to have exaggerated his role in World War II. He also murdered a family political rival. So, how did this man stay in power? Marcos created an elaborate cult of personality. When that state mandated adulation proved insufficient for him to maintain control, President Marcos declared martial law. On September 11, 1917, Josefa Edralin gave birth to a son in the village of Sarat, on the island of Luzon, the Philippines. The boy was named Ferdinand Edralin Marcos. Persistent rumors say that Ferdinand's biological father was a man named Ferdinand Chua, who served as his godfather. Officially, however, Josefa's husband, Mariano Marcos, was the child's father. Young Ferdinand Marcos grew up in a privileged milieu. He excelled at school and took an eager interest in martial skills, such as boxing and shooting. Marcos attended school in Manila. His godfather, Ferdinand Shua, may have helped to pay for his educational expenses. During the 1930s, the young man studied law at the University of the Philippines outside of Manila. This legal training would come in handy when Marcos was arrested and tried for a 1935 political murder. In fact, he continued his studies while in prison and even passed the bar exam with flying colors from his cell. Meanwhile, Mariano Marcos ran for a seat on the National Assembly in 1935 but was defeated for a second time by Julio Nalundasan. On September 22, 1935, as he was celebrating his victory over Marcos, Nalundasan was shot dead at his home. Mariano's 18-year-old son, Ferdinand, had used his shooting skills to kill Nalundasan with a .22 caliber rifle. The young law student was indicted for the killing and convicted by a district court in November of 1939. He appealed to the Supreme Court of the Philippines in 1940. Representing himself, the young man managed to get his conviction overturned despite strong evidence of his guilt. At the outbreak of World War II, Ferdinand Marcos was practicing law in Manila. He soon joined the Filipino army and fought against the Japanese invasion as a combat intelligence officer in the 21st Infantry Division. Marcos saw action in the three-month-long Battle of Bataan in which the Allied forces lost Luzon to the Japanese. He survived the Bataan Death March, a week-long ordeal that killed about one-fourth of Japan's American and Filipino POWs on Luzon. Marcos escaped the prison camp and joined the resistance. He later claimed to have been a guerrilla leader, but that claim has been disputed. Marcos served in the House of Representatives from 1949 to 1959 and the Senate from 1963 to 1965 as a member of Rojas' Liberal Party. In 1965, Marcos hoped to secure the Liberal Party nomination for the presidency. The sitting president, Diosdado Macapagal, had promised to step aside, but reneged and ran again. Marcos resigned from the Liberal Party and joined the Nationalists. He won the election and was sworn in on December 30, 1965. President Marcos promised economic development, improved infrastructure, and good government to the people of the Philippines. He also pledged to help to South Vietnam and the U.S. in the Vietnam War sending more than 10,000 Filipino soldiers to fight. 
Ferdinand Marcos was the first president to be re-elected to a second term in the Philippines. Whether his re-election was rigged is a subject of debate. In any case, he consolidated his hold on power by developing a cult of personality like those of Stalin, Mao, or Niyazov of Turkmenistan. Marcos required every business and classroom in the country to display his official presidential portrait. He also posted giant billboards bearing propagandistic messages across the country. Born on July 2, 1929 in Manila, the capital city of the Philippines, Imelda Marcos is best known as the former First Lady of the Philippines. First, however, she was Imelda Remedios Visitacion Romualdez, the oldest daughter of a lawyer and a homemaker. She grew up with her five younger siblings and several other half-siblings from her father's first marriage. The family continued to struggle financially. To put food on the table, Imelda sold off a small diamond from a necklace of her mother's whenever money was tight. Imelda attended an all-girls school called Holy Infant Academy in Tacloban. She studied English there, among other subjects. In the early 1950s, Imelda moved to Manila to live with a cousin. There, she met a young politician on the rise named Ferdinand Marcos. Only 11 days after meeting each other, Imelda and Ferdinand married in a small civil ceremony. The couple then threw themselves an elaborate bash for friends and family a month later. They eventually had three children together, Aimee, Irene, and Ferdinand Jr., also known as Bongbong. In the mid-1970s, Imelda served as governor of the Metro Manila areas. While many Filipinos lived in poverty, Imelda Marcos became known for her lavish spending. She traveled to New York City and other destinations to buy expensive fashions high-end jewelry, and other luxury items. Marcos had to have the finest of everything for the presidential residence, the Malacanang Palace. But all of this splendor was gained at the cost of the Filipino people. It is believed that the Marcos family and their cronies took billions from the country's coffers. A handsome man, Marcos had married the former beauty queen Imelda Romualdez in 1954. Her glamour added to his popularity. Within weeks of his re-election, Marcos faced violent public protests against his rule by students and other citizens. Students demanded educational reforms. They even commandeered a fire truck and crushed it into the presidential palace in 1970. The Filipino Communist Party re-emerged as a threat. Meanwhile, a Muslim separatist movement in the South urged succession. President Marcos responded to all of these threats by declaring martial law on September 21, 1970. Here, we have proclaimed martial law in accordance with the powers vested in the President by the Constitution of the Philippines. He suspended habeas corpus, imposed a curfew, and jailed opponents like Benigno Ninoy Aquino. This period of martial law lasted until January 1981. Under martial law, Ferdinand Marcos took extraordinary powers for himself. He used the country's military as a weapon against his political enemies, displaying a typically ruthless approach to opposition. Marcos also awarded a huge number of government posts to his and Imelda's relatives. Imelda herself was a member of parliament from 1978 to 1984. She was a governor of Manila from 1976 to 1986, and likewise a minister of human settlements from 1978 to 1986. 
Marcos called parliamentary elections on April 7, 1978. None of the members of JEB, former Senator Benigno Aquino's Laban Party, won the races. Election monitors cited widespread vote buying by Marcos loyalists. In preparation for Pope John Paul II's visit, Marcos lifted martial law on January 17, 1981. Nonetheless, Marcos pushed through legislative and constitutional reforms to ensure that he would retain all of his extended powers. It was purely a cosmetic change. For the first time in 12 years, the Philippines held a presidential election on June 16, 1981. Marcos ran against two opponents, Alejo Santos of the Nationalist Party and Bartolome Cabangbang of the Federal Party. Laban and Unido both boycotted the election. In proper dictator fashion, Marcos received 80% of the vote. He took the opportunity in his inauguration ceremony to know that he would like the job of eternal president. Opposition leader Benigno Aquino was released in 1980 after nearly eight years in prison. He went into exile in the United States. In August of 1983, Aquino returned to the Philippines. Upon arrival, he was hustled off the plane and shot dead on the runway at the Manila airport by a man in a military uniform. The government claimed that Rolando Galman was the assassin. Galman was immediately killed by airport security. Marcos was ill at the time, recovering from a kidney transplant. Imelda may have ordered Aquino's killing, which sparked massive protests. August 13, 1985 was the beginning of the end for Marcos. 56 members of the parliament called for his impeachment for graft, corruption, and other high crimes. Marcos called a new election for 1986. His opponent was Corazon Aquino, the widow of Benigno. Marcos claimed a 1.6 million vote victory, but observers found a 800,000 win by Aquino. A people power movement quickly developed, driving the Marcoses into exile in Hawaii and affirming Aquino's election. The Marcoses had embezzled billions of dollars from the Philippines. Imelda famously left over 2,500 pairs of shoes in her closet when she fled Manila. With the assassination of local Ferdinand Marcos opponent, Benigno Aquino in 1983, the Marcos government began to lose its hold over the Filipino people. Imelda ended up fleeing the country with her husband after he was forced from office by the People Power Movement in 1986. In the rush to leave, she left many items behind at the presidential palace. Her impressive collection of roughly 1,200 pairs of designer shoes made headlines. These fancy pieces of footwear became international symbol of the former ruling couple's flamboyant spending habits and wealth. A first lady no longer. Imelda has struck out on her own as a political force. She won her first election since returning from exile in the mid-1990s. Imelda served as a member of the House of Representatives for several years. In 2010, she won election to become the representative for Ilocos Norte Province. This area is where her late husband was born and where the Marcos family still wields some political clout. Two of her children are in politics as well.